Webflow just announced a new UX for components and you're not gonna be looking everywhere for your properties anymore. For a while, Webflow components were difficult to parse and even tougher to modify. You'd create a new Webflow component and you'd be digging around for the settings you wanna modify. But first, what are components? Just like variables or classes, components are an easy way for you to organize your build so you're not recreating things over and over again for something as small as, let's say, a card. Let's say you wanted to make a feature set that had three cards in it. You were content with the way that they looked, but you realized you'd much prefer the icon below the content and not above it. And maybe you'd prefer the cards have an eyebrow and a button in them too. You'd have to go in manually and change each one. And that could take a really long time. Instead, we'll turn to components to save us time and more importantly, money. So let's take our cards and turn them into components instead. I'm gonna delete all the cards but one so that we can duplicate instead of clean up. I'm gonna duplicate this section so that we can have a reference for copy, but I'm gonna delete all but the original card in the original container. And this is so it's gonna be easier for us to actually modify this individual card. Now, all we have to do to make a new component is to click our features card, go to components, click create new components, and give it a name. That's it. That's components. No, I'm just kidding. There's a little more to it. Now let's customize it. I'm going to double click our component, or you can click the pencil icon above it. And that's how you know that you're editing the actual component. If you're used to Webflow, you'll notice a new tab on the right called props. That's where our cards properties will live. We can set a few properties and see how that works. It's important to think about how you'll be using components and what pieces you wanna customize. The purpose of creating a component is to be able to reuse it. What parts will you be customizing every time and what parts will stay the same? We know that we're gonna have a custom icon for every card. And of course, we want the heading and the paragraph to be customizable too. So let's create some custom properties for a heading first. We have two ways to do this. We can set properties on the card and then tie them to our elements, or we can just create properties from the elements. I prefer the latter as it's less steps. I'm gonna select our heading and go to settings, and then I'm going to click the purple icon next to text. This might look like variables, and that's because they're sort of similar and that they're tied to individual components. So I'm gonna click text and click create and connect new property. And I'm gonna call this heading text. For the default, I'm gonna call it feature name. And by default, that heading three, whenever we duplicate a card, will just be feature name. If we were to duplicate this card on another page, the default text will show before everything else. A good practice is to set the intention of what the actual text in the card says. In this case, it's a feature card, so I'm gonna write feature name. This will inform what you should be writing in the future if you come back to the website at a later date and you can't remember what its purpose is. Let's do the same for paragraphs, but we're gonna use the other method instead, just to demonstrate how it works. I'm gonna select the whole container, which is what our component is comprised of, and click props, do a plus, and hit text. And I'm gonna call this paragraph text. And I'm gonna say describe the feature in depth using one sentence. And just like that, we've set a property for the paragraph. But the thing is, we haven't tied the actual paragraph to the property. The property is just floating out there doing nothing. So let's do that. I select the paragraph and then I tie it to our paragraph text. And it's automatically applied. Just like text, we can add image properties, rich text for when you need styling like bold and italic, links, which we'll touch on in a moment, videos and visibility. So let's talk about links. In order for us to do that, our card needs a link at all. So let's cover two things at once, link properties and nested components. We decided earlier that we wanted buttons in our cards. Maybe we wanna link each card to something different so that we can sell different features depending on which card we put it in. Let's make our button a component just like we did for the cards. Instead of clicking the component panel and creating a new component from there, let's take a shortcut. Select your button and hit Command Shift A on Mac or Control Shift A on Windows. We've instantly made our button into a reusable component. I'm gonna call this button and instead of just calling it button, I'm gonna add a bracket here and I'm gonna call it button primary because this is going to be our primary button. And in the event that we want a secondary button, we can rename that button bracket secondary. And it's just gonna be a lot cleaner in our component field. 
Now, all of the properties that we need are immediately available to us and we're familiar because we've already done the card before. So let's tie these properties to what we need in the button. I'm gonna tie the text of the button and call this button text and give it a default button text. We will do get started and set a link on the button. So we'll call this button link. We can either make this button link to the same place everywhere or we can link it to wherever we need whenever we need that button component. So let's do that. I'm gonna create a new property for the link and I'm gonna call it button link. Thankfully, we aren't forced into any of these settings when we make the button. It's only asking us to choose a default. I'm gonna say that the page is the default and this tab for the default opening behavior. Most links on our site will open to another page, not take us away to a different website. And we've already tied the button text. Now that we have our card and our button and they've got their properties, Let's put the button into the card. Instead of copying and pasting the button into the card, I'm gonna delete it, and don't worry, it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna show you another way to insert a component. We're gonna double click on our card to enter edit mode, select text secondary, that way our button appears below that when we insert it, and instead of dragging it out from the component library, I'm gonna hit command E, and I'm gonna type button. Go down with your arrow and press enter. We've automatically added it into your card. So now if we escape the card and we duplicate the card multiple times, you can see that that button is always going to be there in that card. But now that our button is in the card, we need to tie the button's properties back into the parent of the card. Because right now, all we have access to are the heading text and the paragraph text. And we need to be able to link the button whenever we use that card. Now, I know we already set properties in the button before, and it can feel like we're doing double duty. But now that the button is in the card, we need to expose its properties to the card component. This is where I like the new props panel. I'm gonna double click to edit this, go to props. I'm gonna add a link and call it button link. And I'm gonna add a button text. Give it a default value. Then I'm going to link this up to that. Now that everything is linked up, Let's edit everything. Here's what trips up people the most. Right now, we're editing the component itself. If we change anything in this view, it'll affect every instance of this component. Here, watch. I'm gonna duplicate this three times, delete the feature name, and you'll see it's removed from every single component. You can tell that we're editing this component itself because everything in the background fades, and the only thing in our navigator that's left is what's in the feature card. In addition, you can also see that there's a little back arrow here where it says back to the features card. And if we click that, it goes back out of the card. We can also escape by just pressing escape on our keyboard until we're back at the base layer. We can also go deeper if we're in the card component and we double click on the button itself. Same deal with the navigator and fading with the button. Let's escape all the way out. With all the properties tied, we have two ways of modifying the component. We can edit directly on the component, like if we wanted to change our paragraph text here, or the heading text. Or we can edit in the side panel. If we want to change the heading, we don't have to double click into the component. That's editing. We specifically double click on the text itself and start writing. With our button, same thing. We've already tied the button text to the parent feature card component. So we can just double click the text and modify it as we need to. Same thing with the button link. If you click on this in the side panel, you can change which page or link it's tied to. And I'm gonna just tie this eyebrow real quick. I'm gonna say eyebrow and give it the default text of eyebrow. Same thing with our image. Now we can duplicate this feature card and modify the copy on all of our cards but keep parity on all of them. But one last thing, on one particular card, we don't have a page for it, so we don't want a button. If we edit the component and we delete the button, it deletes the button in all of our cards. Enter the visibility option. Let's create that visibility option on our button first. We're gonna modify the button component, and we're gonna say button visibility. That way we can expose it in our actual main parent container. So in the props, we're going to create a button visibility again. And we're going to tie our button's visibility to that particular parent prop. So now if we escape 
and we duplicate this card, we can turn button visibility on or off depending on when we need it. And actually, what if our client changed their mind? They want to remove the icons and they want the button to be between the paragraph and the heading. No problem. These are components. We'll make all the changes at once. We'll just delete the icons, escape, and we're good. Now, in the future, Webflow is introducing component slots where you can create empty slots to put whatever you want in them. I'm really excited for this feature. It's gonna increase the flexibility of components and allow us to create components that aren't as rigid as they currently are. We could have slots for other components that won't require properties or any element for that matter. That's components. Simple, easy, and preferred if you're recreating and reusing any element on a website. Check out the full Webflow Masterclass to learn more about components and how you can learn to use them in deeper ways. You've saved so much time making components and reusing them instead of modifying classes over and over again. So take that time and go take the Webflow Masterclass. Until next time.